I've had crippling approach anxiety for a very long time, and this is the only system I've ever found that fixed the problem. This unique strategy is the only thing that I've ever found to work for me. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First and foremost, you have macro and you have micro. Macro and micro are two sides of different coins. Macro is how do I get better at approaching women long-term? How to become more extroverted? How does it become less terrifying for me in the long-term? How, how can I be drawn to the actions that propelled from it? Micro is more how do I handle a particular single night? Because your progress is like this. When you back up, if you look at a, a rising stock really close up, it looks very erratic and up and down. But if you back up, you see over the long haul, it goes up and up and up. That's macro micro. Micro is sometimes you just don't feel it. Sometimes you're just not in the pocket to go and approach. That's fine. How do you handle that? And how do you even maximize those nights where you are in a good mood? What are the things you do? Macro is how do I develop more of the ability to approach long-term. Basically building momentum. Micro momentum, macro momentum. Micro is how do you build momentum in a single night. Macro is how you build momentum over the long-term. This all comes back to one thing, which is action and ego. The actions you take feed the character you believe you are. If you're somebody that hasn't approached girls in 25 years, you have 25 years of momentum saying, I don't approach girls. Habits and actions, actions and mindsets and beliefs about who am I? That's not who I am. All these rationalizations for why you didn't approach that girl when you saw her. And now you're coming to terms with the fact that this is not a helpful mindset or belief. You can't, are having a hard time believing in yourself. To go against this is ego death. You are risking this character that you believe you are to replace it with something else and it's painful. That's what approach anxiety is. The actions you take will feed back into you, who am I and who are you will feed back into your actions. It's circular, it feeds into itself. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to rip this cord of this lawnmower until the lawnmower starts going. And once it goes, it's easy. But for a lot of you guys who are just starting off or have 25 years of anti-momentum, it's not gonna be that easy. It's gonna be difficult for you to start this engine, it's gonna be, it's not gonna be an easy ride, at least not initially. Eventually what you wanna do is you wanna have so much fun doing the action that you are drawn to going out and talking to girls, where you're drawn to go and say hi to a pretty girl. Now back to micro momentum. The first approach. This is over the course of a single night. This is micro momentum. This is what this is the momentum you build in a single night. So when you walk in the club, the very first person you think of approaching, you have to have to have to approach. It's the most important approach of the entire night. If you say no to her, you're building anti-micro momentum. If you approach her, you're building positive micro momentum. You want to be relaxed and excited. These are the two motions that are going to get you into the upbeat, positive, crazy energy that you need to be in. If you walk out and you're already in the pocket, in the zone, sweet. If you're already hyped, sweet, but relaxed and excited are the two best emotions you can walk into a club with. If you can get yourself in this headspace every time you go out, you'll crush it. Imagine you have an hourglass shape. At the bottom are all the negative emotions, pain, stress, self-judgment, and at the very top, you have all these positive emotions where we're all part of the same family, you're upbeat, you're laughing. These are the emotions that are of state. These are the emotions that are of you being in your head. The emotions in the middle that get you to the top are relaxed and excited. If you can get these two emotions, you have no problem moving into the upper, more positive, upbeat emotions to get you in the pocket, to get you in the zone. Frat boy scientist dichotomy. This is something that I came up with a couple years ago to help me out with clients that were too logical, that were too analytical. A lot of you guys are stacking so much extra stuff on your, on your psyche. You're like, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Imagine your brain being a computer. If you're stacking a bunch of programs on this computer while you're trying to export a file, how much longer will it take to export that file? Now, the exported file is you talking to a girl and all the programs running are all the things that you think you need to have. You go and say hi to a girl, she better like me. She has to like me. You walk up to a girl, I gotta focus on my eye contact. I gotta focus on this, I gotta focus on that. There's only so much you can focus on before you were just legit just stacking way too much. Focus on one or two things every night, nothing else. Otherwise, you're a frat boy. You're going out to have a lot of fucking fun, hang out with your boys, tease around and get in a good positive mood. You're out partying with your friends, just having a crazy night. Who, how can I make this a fun adventure? That's the frat boy. Then when you go home, then you could be a scientist. When you go home and you leave the club, sit down, pen and paper, write it down, be as logical as you want. So you need both sides of the coin to get good at this and also build ultimately macro momentum eventually. Which takes me to my next point. Macro momentum, what you need to, when you're focusing on the long term is consistency. Consistency. So you need to go out minimum three times a week with the intent of approaching. 
And there's a lot of other ways you can build this as well, but consistency going out and showing your brain it's okay. And this must be something that I do. It will start looking for a persona that will match the actions you're taking, or you're gonna keep going through ego death, ego death, ego death until it catches on. Once you're past ego death, it's a lot easier to move forward with the new personality, with the new persona. You will now be drawn to the action, but it all starts with consistency. Extroverted actions. This is what I was mentioning a second ago. These things are powerful. These are actually, these are what you should start building as habits. You wanna build them one at a time. They can be such things as eye contact, speaking up for yourself, putting your comfort first. They could be mindsets. They could be making friends randomly. They could be when you take an Uber, having a conversation with them. What you wanna do is you wanna make these habitual. So you are actually building momentum, macro momentum, when you're out and about. The action feeds the ego. If you are taking extroverted actions every day, when you go out long-term doing this stuff, when you're doing this for one year, two years, three years, and they're just habits, you'll start believing you are an extroverted person. Then when you go out, it's a lot easier to go say hi to a pretty girl. Skill building. You wanna take on skills that are angers and things that help you believe you are enough to go talk to a pretty girl. Sometimes a lot of you guys will not feel that you guys can go approach a cute girl because what you guys are afraid of is the fact that maybe this environment is a lot bigger than you. Maybe this isn't your home. This isn't your, your playground. The girl that you're talking to is higher value than you. So when you factor in all this stuff, that's a lot of pressure. The girl's higher value than you, then why are you going to go talk to her? She's not going to say yes. So it helps to start building skills, to start chasing things down, to develop Develop skills that make you feel more confident. Boxing, working out, singing, dancing, whatever it is that you find that you have a hole in your confidence with. If you are afraid of other guys, start practicing fighting. If you feel uncomfortable on a dance floor, start practicing dancing. If you want to be have a better voice, practice singing. If you want to... If you think that becoming a... If you think learning guitar is going to make you more confident when you take a girl back home... Do it. Whatever you have to do to make yourself feel more confident, do it. It will help out with the macro momentum and make yourself feel more confident to walk into a club and go talk to a pretty girl. It's regardless. You want to do these consistently though. The 2.0 version is who am I and who's the version of me that I need to be to get the ultimate outcome I want. Now, the way that you can use these to get rid of approach anxiety in regards to field reports, sit down and ask yourself, what were the mindsets that held me back from approaching? And what are the mindsets that I could replace those with that would draw me to the action. Oh, there was a security guard over there. I don't want to approach that girl because I don't want to get in trouble with security guard. But what if, what would be the mindset of a guy that could approach in front of the security guard? He would think to himself, okay, I'm a very charismatic guy. I'm upbeat. If I, I'm going to go talk to her. And if he's weird about it, that's, that's on him more or less. I'm not making the girl feel uncomfortable. And if, if I did, I would just walk away, which again feeds back in 2.0 version. You sit down and you think it through. How does the next version of yourself capable of approaching girls and where's mindsets that draw them to the action? Whereas you have mindsets that propel you and stop you from approaching. Now your health. I found that the more tired I am, the more stressed out I am, the harder it is to be witty, to be upbeat, to want to go talk to girls. I, I lost that lack, the, the light switches off in, in my house. So I'm having a hard time when it comes to being witty, to being prepared, to being mentally present. It's, it's a lot harder to be present. It's a lot harder also to even control your emotions when you're down in a lower energy. It's harder to be relaxed. It's tougher not to get cantankerous or cranky. So you want to get plenty of sleep, regular sleep, eat clean, eat clean, vegetables, drink a lot of water. If you do these things, it'll help massively out with your approach anxiety. And now lastly... This is my nightly system. This is my tiered approach. You want to ask yourself a certain litany of questions when you're having a hard time approaching. One, can I intentfully approach? Can I approach with any form of intent? Whether it's me saying it with the way that I move or speak, or whether or not I'm directly saying, I think you're cute. There has to be some form of intent. Can you do that? No. Then do an unintentful approach. Approach for self-amusement. Approach to make a friend. Approach to ask a question. Uh, maybe do a passing comment. Now, let's say you can't do any of those things. You can't do an unintentional approach. You can't do an unintentional approach. Cool. Then you just want to stay and relax. So now what do we want to do? You want to get yourself back to relaxed and excited. So that is the baseline. It's going to get you into the upper tiers again, remember? So you want to see, can I stay in this environment and just relax? You want to focus on everybody being your best friend and just enjoy the environment. Music's playing, bob your head. You, you want to maybe go grab a water at the bar. Maybe you want to go talk to people that you felt comfortable with. Maybe your friend's there. Go hang out with your friend. Do whatever you feel that you have to do to get yourself relaxed so that you can get yourself in a better mood and back into state. Now, if all else fails, take a break. There's been so many times where either I have taken a break 
or I've given a client a break and then they come right back and they take a girl home. You wanna pull out your phone and set an alarm for either 15 to 30 minutes and then find something to do. Usually I will play a mindless brain game or I will listen to Audible or I will write, I'll sit down and write. Whatever you have to do to get yourself relaxed, pull yourself out of the environment. You're not allowed to think about going out and approaching for 15 to 30 minutes. You wanna meditate on this one thing that's gonna relax you, then get yourself back in there and then start the tiered approach again. All right guys, this is my system for overcoming approach anxiety. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. With that being said, peace. I am the king, I need a throne. Get on a track and I kill it, I'm gone. Never gonna get me out of my zone. Everyone always calling my phone. Sending a song they want me on. I be saying no, we are not the same. I'ma let them know, run up in the game. Never lose control, I've been on my way. I'm incredible, damn, work every day of the week.